Good afternoon and welcome to our weekly webinar. I'm Kathy Fetke, the co-CEO of Real Wealth Network, and I'm so very honored to introduce my other co-CEO, my husband, Rich Fetke. If you have not heard his presentation on how to be a more focused investor, you're in for a huge treat. And I can tell you that as his wife, this is not just something he talks about. He lives this every day. He's got his binder with his checklists and he, he, he sets his goals for the year and he achieves them, uh, which is just something I hope to accomplish someday. Uh, so you probably, as you already know, he's the co-founder and co-CEO of Real Wealth Network. You might not know that he is a licensed real estate broker and active investor and a master certified business coach. Now that you're probably wondering what that is, but he uh, he was certified actually uh, from CTI, Coaches Training Institute in San Rafael. If you haven't checked that out, do. It's, it's a wonderful program and he is a master coaching. He's been coaching for as long as I've known him. Uh, and has uh, he's the author of Extreme Success. Extreme Success is about his extreme sports, uh, jumping off bridges and out of airplanes, and he was in the X Games. And I would always ask him, you know, what does it take to overcome that kind of fear? And he said, well, I'll write a book about it. So it's really how to overcome the kind of fear that not only of jumping off things, but uh, maybe asking someone to marry you or looking for a job, or doing that interview, whatever it is. It's a great book. Check it out. And uh, he he wrote this. He's a happy hubby and papa. And we are expecting our first grandchild. So that's exciting. So Rich, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I appreciate that, honey. Yeah. I was <laughs> thinking about you have known me a long time, 23 yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. All right. Well, let's jump into uh, the focused investor. Are you a focused investor? And the reason I'm saying that is because hopefully you attended the live event or the webinars that we did at the beginning of the year, uh, really taking a look at your 2019 and beyond where you wanted to go and what you wanted. So, um, you know, this, and here we are uh, more than six, six months through 2019. This year is flying by. I don't know if it is for you, but it is for me and Kathy. <laughs> it's very power packed in a great way. Um, but let's let's take a look because you know often it's like we get into the year, we start going along, and we come in uh, all fired up and ready to go, and we have our clear goals and our intentions and or resolutions, whatever you want to call them, and then we start to take a look at whoa, life got in the way, things get busy and all that. So. Um, so let's move into that. And this is one of my favorite quotes from Zig Ziglar. He said, people often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. So here we are. We're going to take a little bath together. <laughs> it sounds kind of weird, but uh, we're going to get a little motivation because we have to do this on a regular basis. So hopefully I can provide some inspiration and motivation for you today or tap into that. So here's my intent for today. Today's webinar uh, is to provide a mid-year check-in on your plan for real wealth in 2019 and share inspiring ways to be a more focused and a more effective investor. So let's take a look at that. You know, most of our webinars at Real Wealth are focused on basically the how-tos of real estate investing, different markets, the economy. But today's webinar is definitely going to be a little different. And since you're a member of Real Wealth Network, I probably don't have to explain all the benefits of real estate investing, such as owning hard assets that bring cash flow and have great tax benefits and how you can use leverage to grow a portfolio that brings you ongoing cash flow. We all know that. It's good stuff. We love that. So um, I think what we realize is that real estate is a great way to, to create real wealth which as you probably know, it's really, we define real wealth is simply having the money and also the freedom to live life on your own terms. So that's what we're looking at today. How can you have more money and more freedom to live life on your own terms? But this is my intent, but there is a big problem. And the problem is this, life is busy. We put off what matters. It's so easy to get caught up in the busyness of life. And we don't often realize what really matters until it's too late. And I've seen this, I've talked to people who are about to pass and, and they look back at their life and they say, wow, I'm really glad that I did this or oh, I have these regrets. And so let's take a look at that today because we do not want to be this guy. Don't let this be you. We want to have our head in the right place. We want to look around. We want to know what's going on. We want to be aware. So today 
hopefully I ask you some questions and you look at some things that will help bring that awareness. So that's the intent and that's the problem that we're dealing with. And so here's the plan. We're gonna go through this basic coaching process today. And this is summarized in that, um, in that annual Focus Investor event, which I'll go over in a second. But we're just gonna go around this envisioning, looking at where you wanna go, strategizing, taking the vision and turning it into a game plan, implementing that, that game plan, and then stepping back and observing what's working. So we're going to hit on all these today. Um, but a lot of what we're doing is looking at the observe, that orange arrow right there. We're observing what's working, what's not working in your 2019. And also today, I'm going to share some tools and tips that Kathy and I use as real estate investors, uh, what really helped us create real wealth, and hopefully some of those tools and tips will also help you with your portfolio and you uh, in creating real wealth. So right now, if you are, if you go to our site or after this, if you didn't attend the January live event, here is where it is. If you go to realwealthnetwork.com, you click on that learn tab and it will drop down and you'll see the learning center. And under learning center there, if you uh, look down near the bottom, it says creating real wealth. If you click on creating real wealth right there, uh, I think you have to go to the second page once you get there and you'll see how to be a focused investor right there. Uh, it's the live event up in San Mateo. We, re we video recorded it and it goes in uh, more depth and really leads you through the process. So if you want to set your intentions for the rest of 2019, if you didn't go through that process, you could do that. If you wanted, if you attended and you want a reminder of some of the things, they're there. I also walk you through the future focus exercise, which we'll we'll hit on today. We won't do it today, but we'll take a look at that and what value you can get from it. All right, and this, like Kathy said, this is a process that I'm <laughs> slightly obsessed with. Something I've been doing for probably 30 years, more than 30 years now. Uh, I have what I call my my master plan in a binder, and it has my lifetime goals, my five-year goals, 10-year goals, three-year goals, one-year goals, goals for the quarter. And we do a very similar thing at Real Wealth Network. Every uh, every year we meet with our whole team, now uh, 22 employees, and we all get together and we talk about basically we observe how did the last year go what worked, what didn't work how can we be better how can we improve how can we better serve our members and then we look ahead into the future sometimes 20 years into the future looking at where we want to go we get a little woo woo and look at that but we also come up with very clear goals and plans for the year and boil it down get it all simple you can see everything behind me up on the wall is from everyone's input and putting together the game plan and honestly it's i think it's a big part of what's helped Real Wealth Network grow as a company. Uh, now on the Inc. 5000 list of America's fastest gro growing companies for the third year in a row. So we're super grateful about that. And a lot of it is because of us being able to focus and operate as a cohesive team. We do the same thing with our affiliates as well. We get together twice a year. We got that coming up in Cleveland in just about a month. We get together with all our, our affiliates who have uh, investment properties available. And we talk about best practices, goal for the, goals for the year, our purpose, our mission, our values, and it gets everyone aligned. And so today I'm not gonna come and tell you what to do. I'm not gonna you know, give you instructions or anything. I really see you as the expert and this is co-active coaching. Co-active coaching is all about co-creating together. I see you as the expert, you know what you're doing in your life and you know how to find the resources and what you need to improve your um, real estate portfolio as well. So I'm just gonna keep asking you questions today. Please, I hope you have a, a piece of paper or your laptop or whatever it is to take notes and go through this. So let's take a look and ask some questions. And I wanna check in just on this, why do a mid-year check-in? I mean, I think it's important to do a quarterly check-in. Honestly, we do that with our directors at Real Wealth Network. We get together, all seven of us, and we do an offsite where we get together in person for two days and we really look at, again, what's working, what's not working, how do we grow, how can we improve? And so what it does, doing a mid-year check-in at least halfway through the year, which we do every year at Real Wealth Network for our members, is it helps you to pause and reflect. So often we get caught up in the busyness of life, we're moving along and we don't just stop and think, you know, what is working? Let's take a look at that and reflect on the first six months. It also deepens our gratefulness and awareness, which makes us feel great. It makes us attract better things into our life. So just stopping and looking at what's working, what were my big wins so far? We're gonna take a look at that today. 
And what it does is it leads us to becoming an even better version of ourselves. So I really believe that when we get better, everything around us gets better. So this is a big part of that. It's stopping to look at how did I get better? How can I get better? And what's next? So I mentioned the envisioning piece and strategizing, going around this whole circle. So let's kick in first with this whole envisioning piece and look at how to do that and where you are. So again, if you did the uh, annual event, the Focus Investor annual event, you'll maybe have your notes with you, I hope, uh, or you might be able to recall what uh, came up in that when we set goals for your year and your intentions and your personal quality and all that. If not, it's still something you can do today, here six months for, through the year or seven months through the year. So it's like, how do you want to finish 2019? And then you can also share, you know, basically take these lessons and bring them into 2020. Hopefully you can attend the uh, annual event in January that we do every year. This year will be the 14th year, it's crazy. And, uh, or you can watch the replay uh, on the website uh, when we get the video posted. But let's jump into today. So envisioning's all about looking to your future for your next steps today. Like looking out, where do you wanna be? Like I mentioned, where, uh, what are your lifetime goals? If you really think about that, what are your lifetime goals? And write those down, just give thought to that. What do you want? financially? What do you want with your family? Who do you want to be known for? Um, what's most important to you? And how do you want to finish your life when you're when you're on your last days looking back thinking, okay, I, I've lived a really good life. What do you want that to look like? So we're going to do that just a little bit here. This is what I see a vision is. A vision is simply a very clear picture of what you see for yourself in the future if everything turns out just right. So it's not looking, you know, through that filter of, oh, I don't know if I can do that or other people have failed or anything like that. Not, not letting that, that little itty bitty shitty committee in your head tell you what you can't do or that little gremlin. It's like putting that aside and saying, okay, well, what do I want? If everything turned out just right, that's, that's what I see as a vision. And it's so powerful. You know, Kathy and I imagine this group of maybe having a hundred people of Real Wealth Network when we started it back in 2003. We said, maybe we can get a group of, you know, maybe 100, 200 investors and really support each other and we can help people invest and we can share the lessons that we've learned from our mentors. And then when we had over a thousand people, we started to think, wow, we have a thousand members. What if we were to think bigger? What's, what kind of impact could we make in the world? And we got together with our team and we strategized and visualized that of looking where do we want to be in the future? And we said, how about 2020? Where do we want to be in 2020? And our team came up with, we want to help over 50,000 people create real wealth by the end of the year 2020. 50,000 people. And that seemed like such a stretch. Today, we're at over 46,000 members. So we're totally on track. That's when we had maybe like 5,000 members when we were looking back at that. So amazing what happens when you look at a vision, you get clarity and alignment, and you get everyone kind of rowing the boat in the same direction. One of the things I did at the uh, Focused Investor event in January was what I call future focus. It's looking to the future and actually meeting your future self. So uh, if you were there, you know that we went through this process where everyone closed their eyes and we got woo woo and you went out on a beam of light into space and everything. You can do the same thing by watching that replay if you, if you didn't get this experience. But I love this exercise and I've heard so much positive feedback from people over the last 13 years about doing future self, and you actually meet your future self out 10 years in the future. You get to see what this person looks like, what they walk like, what they're doing, and you get to ask them questions. So when we did that future self exercise, if you did it, I want you to think, what did you see? What did you see? What cool stuff did you see? Bring that back in your mind. Or if you didn't do the future self exercise, think now, if you were to meet yourself, if you were to step into your future, 10 years from today, what would you see? What would you like to see? What would your future self look like? And what advice, what advice would your future self give you? Or what advice did your future self give you when you did it back in January this year or last year or the year before? What kind of advice would your future self, you 10 years in the future, give to you right now? Think about that and then write it down. And any other ideas? What ideas that your did your future self give you or by visiting your future self or right now looking into your future 10 years? What ideas do you get or what do you see? 
Maybe there's a little surprise there. It's just like, oh, I didn't think about that. Or maybe there's no surprises at all. Maybe it's like, this is exactly what I want 10 years from now. This is what I want my life to look like. Go ahead and write that down. And at the beginning of this year, I asked you to take a look at 2019. What were your big goals? What did you envision? What was the theme you wanted for your year? So think about what you envisioned for 2019. And even if you didn't do that, at the beginning of this year, I kind of have a feeling that you may have thought about this year. Wow, it's 2019, one year until it's 2020. What's this year going to be about for me? What do I want 2019 to be? And by going through this process, we kind of bookend kind of bookend. So it's like, in, instead of just having year, year after year go by, and you're just not aware, and you're just kind of checked out and just going through the motions, you know, it's, that's where we can get stuck. So stopping and bookending in the sense of, wow, what was 2018 about for me? And what's 2019 going to be about? And you'll do it at the end of this year, we'll do a webinar, we're going to wrap up the year, we're going to complete 2019, look at what you learned and how you grew what worked uh, with real estate investing, what worked with you in creating more freedom, and what worked for you as a human getting better. So what did you envision for this year? Jot that down. If you have it in front of you, take a look at what you wrote. And then today, here we are seven months through the year, what do you envision now for the rest of this year? Think about that. The rest of July, August, September, October, November, December. What do you envision is going to happen over these months? And what do you want to be celebrating at the end of this year? Go ahead and write that down. And the cool thing about envisioning and how powerful it is and everything, I love it. I, I love to research not only the kind of the whatever the woo woo law of attraction stuff is cool and everything but i love i love science and fact i come from boston so we tend to be very much based on that uh it took a little getting used to california when i moved out here to learn the whole woo woo thing and i totally agree with it i what i like about it is how science and the woo woo connect with each other and so when we envision what we're doing is we're actually tapping into our our ras our reticular activating system it's that part of our brain that filters out everything that is not necessary or not important and it helps filter in the stuff that's most important it's why you can go into a, a crowded room and people are all talking and someone mentions your name and all of a sudden boom you hear it it's your reticular activating system for all of a sudden you're like i'm i want to get a i want to get a tesla and all of a sudden you start seeing teslas everywhere which i think <laughs> we, do, we are seeing that anymore anywhere now so it's, that's the reticular activating system. So by envisioning and thinking about where we want to be in the future, 10 years out, or even where we want to be by the end of the year, that, that reticular activating system extends your antennas and it starts looking for all the opportunities and the people and the connections and the learning resources that will help support that goal. So getting the clarity of vision, it's not only just a thing that feels good, but it also scientifically gets implanted into our brains, if you will, and that brain, that supercomputer, that three pound organ in our skulls that, you know, it's composed of a hundred billion neurons and a hundred trillion synapses, you know, it's that our brains encompass everything we see, we feel, we hear, we taste, we remember. So it's an amazing supercomputer that we can either improve or waste. So it's totally up to us. So that's why I, I love this stuff and I've seen it work so well. And it goes beyond this, you know, it's like, I think we all want to be happy, right? Fulfilled, happy, at peace. Uh, Dr. Tal Ben-Shahar is a professor at Harvard University. And not only that, his course is the highest attended course in all of Harvard's history. And it's a course on happiness. Really wild. <laughs> I think that those kids studying so hard at Harvard can, you know, probably need some happiness. So they sign up for this course. But this is what he says and all his research on happiness and what works and what doesn't work basically boils down to this. To be happy, we need to identify and pursue goals that are both pleasurable and meaningful. So to be happy, we need to identify and pursue goals. That's the first part of that. It's really important. We're teleological beings. To, as the Greeks would say, uh, telos meaning a target. We're aiming toward a target and moving toward it. When we're moving toward a target and moving toward our goals, we're more, we're happier, we're more fulfilled. 
And so you also want your goals to be pleasurable and meaningful. So not the drudgery and stuff that you hate to do, but also thinking about that. That's why I'm asking about what do you want, what's important to you, and connecting that so it's your, your in, you have pleasure and it's meaningful for you as you move ahead. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at those goals. We've gone from envisioning into strategizing. And that envisioning piece is really big. You know, Kathy and I, I just want to hit on that with your future self. When you think about what your future self, what advice he gave to you or she gave to you, you know, Kathy and I have several really wise mentors who've guided us really well. And sometimes my future self gives me the same advice that I've heard from them. It's funny how the subconscious works. I, you know, I'll be doing a future self visualization and I'll meet my future self and, and he'll give me this advice that some of these wise mentors have shared with us maybe three or four months before. But I mean, my future self told me to hold 10% of our net worth in gold in case there's a, a major devaluation of the do dollar. You know, it's important. And now that we did that several years ago, we have 10% of our net worth in gold. And you probably have seen what's happened to gold in the last year just because of what's happening. Because, I mean, it's gold has outperformed stocks in, over the last 20 years. It's a great way to store wealth, also in hard assets like real estate is as well. But we like to diversify a little bit. But it also provides that liquidity to meet liabilities uh, during times of market stress, which could be coming. Um, there will be time of market stress. So that's one of the things. But again, it's, my future self gave me this advice, got me into action, even though I think it's something I heard from one of my one of my mentors a while back. Um, you know, my future self has also suggested that Kathy and I purchase a particular investment property or even better advice. He's also said, you probably shouldn't buy that. And he's, he saved our ass on several potential mistakes. So really tapping into that is is really a powerful source. So once you get that envisioning piece, you get clear, you connect with your future self, you look um, with all the gremlins aside and you're looking at what you really want if everything turns out just right, then you take that and you create a plan from there. You turn it into a strategy. So let's move into that. And now we're going to go into some real hands-on strategizing for what you envision um, back in January or where you are for the rest of the year. So balance. Balance is a really interesting thing. You know, it's it's not static. It sounds like it. You know, I think what we're really doing, the reason I wrote balancing life is because we're always balancing. It's like this guy standing on a high line. He's like always making corrections, shifting a little to the right, shifting a little to the left, sometimes big corrections. And that's what we often have to do. We always have to do in life. Or even if you're just standing there on the ground, you're just standing there. You're always self-correcting little tiny cor corrections and improvements. So I'm going to take you through a process that I just love and I think you'll dig too. And uh, it's called a life balance wheel. If you want to download this and you have access right now to the, to the web, um, you can just go to fetke.com, our last name, fetke.com forward slash extreme dash book. Um, or if you go to fetke.com, you can just click on, it says extreme success book or extreme book, big um, like red block right there. And that'll take you in. You'll see. Uh, to download the life balance wheel that you're seeing right here and it's free you don't have to give me your email address or anything like that i'm just putting it out there uh, to help you guys and or you can just uh, go ahead and sketch this out right now and just draw a circle and draw 10 uh 10 little pizza wedges in it and i'm going to kind of guide you through this process and what you're doing here is you're taking a snapshot of your life right now today to find out how satisfied are you in these different areas of life and it's really powerful, you know, yes, we're here talking about finances is a big thing of real wealth, but it's also, real wealth is also about these other things, fun, recreation, and self-care, and you, your personal development and education. It's also about your family and your romance and your significant other. I used to pull this out with executives when I was doing business coaching, and I would say, okay, let's just start with this, and I want to get a snapshot of your life. And they're like, no, I want to, you know, I'm here to focus on career and my company and, and growing sales and everything. I'm like, that's great. And you want to make more money. If you don't pay attention to this area over here called significant other and romance, half that money can be gone really quickly, right? And they'd be like, oh, well, you see their, their face would light up and they'd be like, oh, I get it. And the same is uh, true for everything here. If you don't take care of health and fitness, that's going to have a big impact. You're not going to be able to perform in career. Finances are going to get used up and it's going to really take a hit. I know that going through that cancer scare many years ago when we Kathy started Real Wealth Network because of that, um, but it can really chew up the uh, the finances. So anyway, here's the way it works. I hopefully you got one of these drawn out now or you've downloaded one from fetkey.com. Basically what you do is you give a rating 
on zero to 10. The center of this life balance wheel will be a zero, couldn't get any worse. So let's, for example, career. So if you think about your career right now, how satisfied are you? How satisfied truly are you with your career? And you would put a number right there. So these are not mine. <laughs> I'm way up there right now in career. I think it's a, a 9.5. I'm so happy with our team and, and what we do. But I'm just going to give an example here. So say you're a seven, you go ahead and write a seven in career. If you're a nine, write a nine, whatever. If you're a two, write a two. Then do the same for finances. Wherever you are for finances, level of satisfaction, not based on what anyone else thinks or says or does. What do you, what do you feel? How satisfied are you with your finances, meaning your income, your cash flow, how you're managing and tracking your finances, your awareness? You know, can you pull up a personal financial statement today? You know, if you know, that would be a 10 if everything's dialed in and you got everything. Then go around physical environment, possessions. How satisfied are you with your home, your cars, the things you have, the physical stuff around you? How satisfied are you? Health and fitness, give that a rating, zero to 10. If you're feeling super fit and healthy, give it a 10. If you could be a little bit better, give it a lower rating. Fun, recreation, and self-care. Are you getting taking time and giving yourself permission to get out and have some fun, to, to recreate, recreate, as Stephen Covey would say? Uh, self-care, taking good care of yourself. So how satisfied are you with fun, recreation, and self-care? Personal development and education, how well are you learning, growing? As I said earlier, as we get better, everything around us gets better. So learning and growing and educating ourselves and mastery all help. Friends and community, how happy are you? How satisfied are you with your friends and your community? Do you have a nice tight-knit crew, people you can reach out to? Your family, how satisfied are you with your family, your close direct family, or and also your extended family? How satisfied are you with family? What about significant other and romance, your relationship, the romance in that relationship, your connection? How satisfied are you there? And finally, spiritually, whatever that means for you, how connected, how, how do you feel spiritually? Do you feel great? Are you honoring that? So there is the life balance wheel. There's a snapshot of your life. And then once you get all these completed and you have your ratings down, then you go around and you simply draw a line in each of these little wedges. And it gives you an idea, a visual representation of your wheel, your life balance wheel. And you can take a look at that and say, hmm, how bumpy would the ride be if this were an actual wheel? So for some of you, it might be pretty smooth and it might be all consistent. It might be way out near the outer edge, more consistent way near the middle. But for most people I've seen, it usually looks something like this. Some need attention, some don't. What I love about the Life Balance Wheel, it's a great tool for strategizing, for looking at your game plan and really taking a look at based on your level of satisfaction. So often people will keep their career might be an eight and all the other ones are way down there, like fours and fives, but they keep striving for career. They keep cracking the whip to get better and better, and they don't give a, the attention to the other things. Or some people put too much attention on fun, recreation, and self-care, and all the other uh, areas uh, need attention. So for you, take a look at your life balance wheel, look at those numbers, and maybe look at the, the lowest number. So let's take a look at this one. I'm gonna look at finances. So for this person, they're a five. So think about why is that a five? And now think about what would it look like if it were up two numbers? So whatever that number is for you, if you're looking at a three, what would it look like? What would be different? What would be different for you to give it a five? Or say like this person, a five in finances, I would ask this person, what would it, what would it look like if this were a seven? So it's not too far out of your realm of thinking or belief. It's just inching it up. And then you do a new life balance wheel, I'd say every every um, quarter or every six months. And then what I like to do is hide my other one. I don't look at my old one. I pull out a brand new blank one and I fill it out based on my level of satisfaction on that date. And then I'll pull out my old one and see how things have shifted. So it's constantly in flux and constantly looking and working. How can you get all of these out to a 10? That's the goal. That's extreme success. When all of these are out at a 10, that's what I see as extreme success. Complete fulfillment 
and joy and happiness and satisfaction in all these 10 major areas of your life. All right, so that's the life balance wheel. Moving on. One thing I asked you back in January was, what do you want the theme to be for this year? Maybe you did that on your own. Maybe you did that in the workshop. But back in January, when you started 2019, and you thought about, what's this year going to be for me? What did you think of? What did you write down if you were in that workshop or on that webinar? And just check in. Is it turning out the way you intention? Is this a, is the theme that you wanted happening? And if not, what needs to shift? What do you need to do differently? What would help you achieve that theme? And it's kind of like you can look at it like a maybe the title of a movie where um, maybe the theme might be breaking through. And it might be uh, abundance. It could be rising from the ashes. Um, it could be uh, fulfillment. Whatever it might be for you, is that is this year coming true for you? Another thing I asked you back in January was what personal quality do you most want to develop this year? So what was that? What's the one personal quality? that you wanted to develop? How did you want to grow this year? And I gave some suggestions, either courage, maybe authenticity, maybe really committing to integrity, being a kinder person. Kindness might have been the personal quality you wanted to work on or being bold, speaking your bold truth. Maybe it was self-discipline. A bunch of examples there, but what's the one personal quality that you set out to work on and focus on this year? And how's that going? And if it's going well, awesome, <laughs> nice work. If it's not, what needs to shift? Here we are for the rest of the year. What, what needs your attention? How can you remind yourself of that personal quality that you want to develop on a regular basis? And we'll talk about that later on how to remind yourself. Another thing you set back in January is hopefully your big three, the big three. And the big three are your big three goals for the year. So why three? This is following the rule of three. The reason we set three big goals, you can have a thousand goals, you can have a hundred goals, get all those down on paper, get them out of your head. What I'm wanting for you is to have your three big goals in your mind at all times. So if I woke you up in the middle of the night and said, hey, wake up. And I said, what are your, what are your big three for the year? What are your big three goals? You could say, oh, right out of a stupor, you could say this, this, and this. And the reason why, which you probably know the answer now, is that reticular activating system, right? When you plant these things in your brain and you remember three, it's a lot easier than remembering a whole bunch. And then your brain, that supercomputer gets to go, I'm looking for people and opportunities and resources and education that will help me with these three big goals. So why not four? Because the human brain can really only effectively hold on to three main thoughts at a time. Um, the reason why is it's combinations. With When you've got three different things, there can be six different variations of those three things, like a combination lock. When you add a fourth, all of a sudden it jumps up to 24 different combinations of those. And when you add a fifth, it jumps up to 120. 120 different variations when you add a fifth goal. So if you've got five goals, there's all these different ways your brain just can't remember it easily and simply. When you have three, it's like ABC or BAC. It's like it's so easy to remember those for your brain. Less tiring and more aware. So then you actually get to see the opportunities faster and act on those, those opportunities. Also more powerful for accountability. When we set like 10 goals or 15 goals, it's really easy to justify working on the easy or the smaller goals and passing on the bigger, scarier, or more challenging goals and go, well, you know, I did pretty good. I, you know, got to like six of my goals this year, but did you really get to your important goals, the goals that are make, gonna make the biggest difference in your life? So that's the rule of three. So how is it going with your rule of three? How is it going with your big three for 2019? Give some thought to that. Are you at like 50% on those big three goals that you set back in January? Maybe you're done with them. Maybe you like, oh yeah, I forgot about those three big goals. And you need to you know, take a little reminder and say, do you need to reset those, make them a little more achievable, or can you kick it in now and finish those and finish 2019 with a big win or three big wins and really feel great, develop yourself and also get what you want for a better life. 
So I love this from Gary Keller. He's the founder of uh, Keller Williams, author of this book, The One Thing. And Keller Williams is the largest real estate company in the world by agent count. So I think he knows a little bit about prioritizing. And this is what it's all about, the one thing. It's like what really matters when you take those big three, what's the one that matters the most? And having that top of mind, current all the time, you're telling people about it, you're excited about it, you're focused on it. So Gary says, when everything feels urgent and important, everything seems equal. When we become active and busy, oh, we become active and busy, but this doesn't actually move us any closer to success. Activity is often unrelated to productivity and busyness rarely takes care of business. I love that. So that is com completely supports the rule of three. And it also completely supports having that one thing, as Gary says, when you really boil it down, what's most important to you to focus on for this year and or for the rest of 2019. Give that some thought, write it down. I love this piece about big three too. Um, I go through this process. I've been through this process for many, many years and coached clients through it. And uh, so, you know, I got kind of get stoked on it, <laughs> which is kind of weird. But when you set those annual goals and you say, these are my big three, then what you do each quarter, it just simplifies it. It keeps us from being overwhelmed or being scattered. So you take those big three for the year, what matters most to you. And then you boil those down each quarter at the beginning of the quarter, you say, okay, of my big three annual goals, goal A, what am I going to do this quarter toward goal A? What am I going to do this quarter toward goal B and goal C? So each quarter you do that. So you kind of chunk it down. You, you cut it into fourths, if you will. And then each month you start the month saying, okay, my quarterly goals are this. This month, what am I going to achieve toward goal A and so on? At the beginning of each week, you do a review of your monthly goals. You say, these are my monthly goals. What are my weekly goals? What can I do this week that's going to move me toward those three big monthly goals? What can I do? Just something over the next seven days for goal A, B, and C. And then, obviously, at the beginning of each day, you start your day to keep you focused and clear, saying, what are my big three for the day? Not my big nine, you know, where you get to the end of the day. Again, that's an easy thing to focus on. You know, you set nine intentions for your day. And of course, we gravitate as humans toward what's easier instead of doing what's most important. So that's where saying, what are my big three for today? Super powerful to do right before you go to bed for the next day or right when you get up in the morning. What are my big three daily goals? And then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to stress on it. You know that all I got to do is focus on those big three for the day. And that's going to lead me to my weekly goals, to my monthly goals, to my quarterly goals. And it's going to end up completing those annual goals by the time I get to the end of the year. Super powerful, really valuable. And it, and it, really, uh, it really simplifies things so we don't go into overwhelm or feel frustrated. And we're just we, we're more effective. All right. So uh, this is just the process. You want to look at what your big three are. You want to ask yourself why. Why is this important to me? You also want to take a look at the obstacles. There's a lot of research on this about if you look at the obstacles, it increases your chance of achieving your goal almost 80%. If you look at the obstacles, uh, uh, obstacles that's, a, that's a new word, uh, obstacles up front. If you look at those up front, then when those obstacles arise, you're better armed and ready to deal with them. So also looking at what obstacles might come up and if they do, what am I going to do about it? And then really feel it. Close your eyes. Imagine it. It's like, so you want to lose weight. It's like, this is, this is what I want to weigh. And then you close your eyes and you imagine what you'll feel like, what your energy will be like, what you'll, uh, how you'll be able to run or move, what you'll look like. So whatever it is, feel it. If it's real wealth for you, what does that feel like? What does it look like? So then you go from that big picture of the vision. Then we move down into the goals. You set your big three. You've got those written down, I hope. Then breaking it down into habits or rituals, those things that we do on a regular basis. So Charles Noble gives us this advice. He says, first we make our habits and then our habits make us. And I love that. I've seen it over and over, getting clear on what those habits that you want to develop and then they make you who you are. So you can use habits, rituals, success habits, whatever you want. I love the idea of rituals because sometimes habits can be, you know, have also a, ne a negative con connotation, like a, a bad habit. So rituals, things that you do on a regular basis, like this sign says, do something today that your future self will thank you for. 
So rituals are those actions you do on a regular basis that improve your health, your wealth, and or your spirit. They're a lot like exercise. Just one hard workout a month won't do anything for you. It'll do a little bit for you, but not much. But doing something consistently a few times a week does. And what happens on the science side of things is you, we actually change our neural structure. We change our brains in a positive way. You know, repetition is the essence of mastery. Doing something over and over, that's where we get to a good place. So what happens, and what I mean by that is it's neuroplasticity. We actually change our brains. And if you've been to the Focused Investor Workshop over the last lots of years, you know that and, and I love this. I continue to research it, and you probably are very familiar with it now. But neuroplasticity is that um, they used to think that our brains were stuck at a certain age when we got to about 20 years old, that we couldn't learn much more, and our brains started to degenerate. As now they know that's not true at all. We can keep learning and growing and developing all the way right up until we die. And uh, so that's the cool thing. It's like our the neurons are actually like, it's like plastic and you can reform your brain. And that happens through myelination. Myelination is that, that the dark matter of our brain, our brains are gray because they're made up of two substances. One is the brain cells, which are almost black, but then there's this other substance that makes up 50% of the brain called myelin, and myelin is white. So when that myelin mixes and blends with the almost black uh, brain cells, it makes that gray matter. So half of our brains is myelin. And what myelin does is when you send a signal from one neuron to the next neuron, uh, they say that neurons that fire together wire together. So when you send a signal from one neuron to the other, when you do something, especially when it's something new, your body, your brain lays down a little bit of myelin. It's like a little sheath. It's almost like a little coating or like insulation on a, on a wire and it makes it a little thicker. And then the next time you go to do that same thing, it's a little easier. It's a little bit easier. It's like when you learned to ride a bike, it was really hard. You laid down some myelin by trying it over and over and figuring out the balance. And then you laid down that myelin and it was um, it's almost permanent. That's why you could jump on a bike later, even if you did, haven't done it for a year and still be able to ride because you laid down that myelination. So it doesn't matter if it's learning to ride a bike or learning real estate investing or whatever it is, you know, or discipline. So if you want to learn something, know that each time you study something, just like real estate investing can be so confusing, so overwhelming, so many terms, you need like a glossary in the beginning. As you continue to practice and be in it and read and learn, uh, as you continue to attend webinars and all this stuff and, and actually get out there and you're investing and everything, your body is laying down this myelin bit by bit and, it's, and that learning doesn't really go away, which is really cool. So it, like I said, it also helps with, uh, with willpower and with discipline. So this comes from uh, Kelly McGonigal. She's a professor over at Stanford University, uh, speaks all over. I just watched one of her uh, videos on YouTube where she speaks was speaking at Google, which is great. If you looked up uh, uh, Kelly McGonigal on YouTube, uh, look for her Stanford talk. But look what she says. Her research has found that studies have found that committing to any small, consistent act of self-control could be improving your posture, squeezing a hand grip every day to exhaustion, cutting back on your sweets, and also keeping track of your spending can increase overall willpower. She says, while these small self-control exercises may seem inconsequential, they appear to improve the willpower challenges we care about most, including focusing at work, taking good care of our health, resisting temptation, and feeling more in control of our emotions. So, who doesn't want to be more in control of their emotions? You know, it's always a good thing to be calm and grounded, but also all these other things, being more focused at work, taking better care of your health. So the cool thing is it's exactly that. What's happening here, which now we all know, is each time you do something, each time you uh, do something that takes self-control, you're laying down some new myelin in that connection of self-discipline and putting off stuff that's uh, not good for us and not even putting it off and not doing something that's not good for us, but but uh, kicking it in and doing what's best. So we get more discipline the more we practice discipline. I love that, and willpower. So going a little bit more on uh, habits and rituals here. So uh, another great book came out uh, last year. Now, I think it's now a New York Times bestseller. Um, James Clear, he's done a lot of research on this. He has an amazing blog, but he says, this is the meaning of the phrase atomic habits a regular practice or routine that is not only small and easy to do, but also the source of incredible power. 
a component of the system of compound growth. So I love that. These little tiny actions, and they're just small, fairly easy to do, but create a lot of power. So what about you? What rituals did you put in place this year that will add more health, wealth, and happiness to your life? Think about that. Back in January, I asked you, what rituals will you put in place? And I asked you to come up with only just, you know, two or three or four, not too many. Start off small. You can, once once become, something becomes a habit or becomes a ritual, you lay down that mile and it becomes easier. Then you can add another one and practice that. And I'm going to show you a way to track that. One of the things here is, um, and here's some examples. So rituals for health, wealth, and happiness. So any of these, look, look at the different um, span, what these go across. It could be waking up at 5 a.m. These, these are things my clients have told me over the years, and some of these are things that I do. No email for the first hour of each day. That's another ritual you might want to focus on. Practicing something for 15 minutes a day. For me, the last couple of years has been piano, 15 minutes a day. A lot of times that turns into 20, 30 minutes, but it gets me started. Acknowledging someone daily. Often we forget that. Doing certain number of repetition, repetition, uh, repetitions of something daily. Uh, meditating. You can see all those studying, investing for 30 minutes a day and on and on. So, um, oh, that last one, review, review, sort, and organize 25 minutes a day. That comes from David Allen's book, Getting Things Done. He just talks about having that one to-do drawer or to-do pile. And whenever something new comes in, you just put it on your to-do pile. And then what you do is you commit to 25 minutes a day or one hour a day, whatever it is for you. You say, I'm going to just put in 25 minutes a day on this, and I'm just going to handle as many things as I can in that 25 minutes, and then I'm done. And it just keeps us up on track. We don't feel overwhelmed or getting behind on things. And I'll give you a little tool for that that can help later in, in uh, that focus. So we've gone from envisioning, looking at where you want to go, the future vision, into strategizing, breaking it down, coming up with a game plan, kind of building out things like that, you know, building out your habits and everything. Then we have to move to implementation because the bottom line, thank you, Helen Keller, ideas without action are useless. So we can have all these great ideas and come up with a rule of three or envision or set your goals and hey, have your plans and everything, but if you don't take action, it's useless. So let's take a look at how to take that action and what it takes. And it takes more than motivation. As Jocko Willink says in Extreme Ownership, he says, don't count on motivation, count on discipline. So think about that for a moment. I love that because if you count on motivation, then if you're not motivated, you're tired, you're hungry, you don't feel like it, and you're like, I'm, not, I'm just not motivated, you're not going to do what you need to do to get to where you want to be or to improve things. But if you count on discipline, then you're going to do it. It's like, I don't care if I'm motivated. I'm tired. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm hungry. I'm going to do it anyway. Whatever it is, count on discipline. I love that. Thank you, Jocko. So here's a way that I've, uh, I've used this with my clients over the years. I think it can really help. For some people who are not as OCD as me, <laughs> I understand maybe you don't want to go through this process. But uh, what it does is this is a way to track those rituals, at least until they become true habits, until they're like really sunk in and you lay down that myelination, that myelin, and it becomes an easy habit to follow. And I put different things on here, but basically the way it works is you lay this out. I have it uh, laid out on in, in my computer, just in a, you know, in a Word document that I can print out. And then you, what you do is you go through your week. Every Monday morning or every Sunday night, you, you can review this. And well, actually every morning you review this or every night you review this. And the way you do it, if say you did yoga in the morning on Monday, you would check it off. You just put your checks in as you go through the day. So that didn't get get in a training in on Monday. So you put an X and then you go through your week on Tuesday. You're going through when you do things, you check them off when you don't. So it's like going back to nursery school or, or, um, or kindergarten when you get the gold star, you're like, Ooh, good job. You stick the gold star. You're kind of doing that for yourself, but all it is is a tracking and accountability, a personal accountability system. And then what happens once you go through every day and you're checking or Xing, then when you get to the end of the week, this is the really breaking it down. You get to the end of the week, then you have a score. You would add up your check marks. You look to the left and say, my goal is to do this seven times, to do it every day. I got seven over seven. 10 minutes of meditation. Ooh, I missed on Thursday. So I got six out of seven this week. And you go through and you do your totals for each day. 
That way, when you get to the end of the week, you can really stop and check in and say, wow, you know, it's pretty good. I'm like a good 80, 85 percent here. I'm doing well. If you look down at this and you saw zeros or twos or threes or something like that, you got to really do an assessment with yourself and say, okay, what happened? What got in the way? And how could I do things different? Now, if you have a professional coach, I have my own coach I talk to every Friday. I send him this form. I just recreate on that same sheet that I send to him, a coaching form. I just take those totals and type them up. So you can see below, that's just to carry over exactly what I did by handwritten because each day I go in and I don't want to open my computer and be checking these things off. I'll just you know take a marker or a pen and just mark them off through the week. But then to send it over to him or if you have a friend, an accountability partner, someone who you want to hold each other accountable, that can be really powerful too. So once a week, you'd send over your results of your rituals from the last week to your friend, to your accountability partner or to your coach. And that way they can just take a look in a quick snapshot, see how things are going. If one of these was like a two over seven or something, your friend or accountability partner or coach could just say, hey, what, what happened here? Tell me what's going on. And then they could ask the most powerful question of, if you could go back and relive this past week, what could have you done differently to get your seven over seven? What would work? And there's growth, there's learning, there's awareness, all that comes. So it's not like they're judging you or beating you up or cracking the whip. It's just like, an awareness, they're holding up the mirror and they're just saying, hey, this is low and this is like the second week in a row that it's low or third week in a row. What do you want to do here? Is this, Why is this important to you? And it just has you check in. Helps the discipline. So Brian Tracy in his book, Focal Point, says, good habits are hard to develop but easy to live with. Bad habits are easy to develop but hard to live with. The habits you have and the habits that have you will determine almost everything you achieve or you fail to achieve. So amen, we just talked all about that. And it, there you go, habits, rituals, whatever you wanna call them, vital. So I talked about how to you know, check in with this on a weekly basis and how to stay aware. And hopefully you're, you've been using something like this after the workshop that we did back in January, your weekly coaching form. It could be your self-coaching form. It could be your weekly coaching form, whatever you want to call it. It's your way to check in once a week so you don't let weeks go by week after week. And I've been through the strategic coach program for two years, which is a quite expensive, high quality um, program for entrepreneurs. Uh, Kathy's been through it. We've been through the uh, the whole EOS system as well. Kathy and I met in a personal development workshop on goal setting and everything, and it's really helped us build what we've built today. And all of them share the same thing. That you have to stop once a week and do a check-in, however that looks. And strategic coach, they call it the pocket coach that you fold up and keep in your pocket. Whatever it is, you want a form, something that you fill out each week, and you might want to just write it up like this, you know, print it up on your computer, and it's really simple. All you do is you answer these questions. How my week went? How did my week go? You can write down, it was a 10, it was a nine, it was a six. And then you write a sentence or two about why. It's your way to journal once a week about what's happening in your life. I think it's a great idea to date it and save it. And that way you can look back. I, I can look back 10 years ago and see what was going on in my life and what was I learning and how was I growing? Sometimes it brings a chuckle, <laughs> uh, but sometimes and almost always it's like, oh, that helped me get to where I am now. You list your successes and wins. This is that gratefulness and awareness piece. What's working in this last week? What were my successes? What, my, what were my wins? So often we focus on the gap of what we didn't do or where we are not. This helps us look at how good things can be and how good things are, and it taps into that great gratefulness piece. Easy to forget, but important to do. Uh, results of my big three from last week, really simple. You know, you say, I'm this week, I'm gonna do this, this, and this toward my big three goals for the year. And then you either kind of put yes, done, or no, not done. And it, it, if you're gonna just do it yourself, you can check in and be honest with yourself, but even more powerful, it's having someone else to help hold you accountable where they're looking down and saying, wow, this is like the second week in a row that you didn't do anything on your first big three goal. What's going on there? And let's talk about that for your learning, accountability, and support. And then results of my uh, rituals from last week. So you, you, uh, oh, that's, I think I said that twice. Oh, the results of the rituals. No. So it's also, you know, looking at the rituals, I just showed you that where you got your numbers, you know, seven over seven, six over seven, whatever. 
then your big three for this week, like you set the uh, intention for the week. So my big three goals for this week are this, this, and this. You kind of put a flag in the ground and saying, this is what this week's about for me. If I can't get to anything else, these are the most important things for me to focus on. And then here's my rituals for this week, which you already saw that form that's blank, that just has your little check boxes or however you want to track it, whatever's going to work for you. You know, I was diagnosed uh, hyperkinetic when I was eight years old, which today they call ADHD. I was put on Ritalin and everything, had a real hard time focusing, didn't even graduate with my high school class because I failed English and was just, just lousy. And I thought I was stupid, but I realized what I didn't have were systems to focus. And then when I started to learn about putting systems in place and breaking it down and then uh, hiring an ADD coach and all that, I realized that we all kind of have our different levels of ADD, we're kind of all on the spectrum. It's been, most people have hard time focusing on something uh, up to someone who's very, you know, severe ADD and they, they can barely focus on anything. But it doesn't matter what level you're at, having systems in place to help you be focused and on track and keep a clear mind can help. So that's what this is all about. So those are the tips and tools and the strategy for being on track. I hope you guys are doing well and you're on track for 2019. I hope those goals and intentions and visions that you set for this year, your personal quality and all that, I hope they're going well. And if you hadn't set those, I hope you've set some new ones for the rest of this year so you can really make the most of it and take that life balance wheel that you just filled out and well, work on those areas that you want more satisfaction and the ones that are going well how can you bump those up one or two points by the end of the year uh, makes for a more fulfilling and happier life so let me go into some tips and tools as leonardo says learning never exhausts the mind so learning and growing and be getting better can be so great so you uh i probably speaking to the cry or singing to the choir here um real estate news for investors obviously a free podcast um every day that Kathy does uh, five to seven times a week on the latest real estate news that relates to us as real estate investors and also the Real Wealth Show that Kathy's been doing since before, really before Real Wealth Network was founded back in 2003. It was on major radio stations and then dropped down to not drop down, but moved over to podcasting so you can reach a lot more people. So those are two great resources for you. And she, on The Real Wealth Show, that's a weekly show where Kathy interviews um, experts and real estate investors and people who've uh, really succeeded and learns from their challenges and their lessons and their successes. And then we all learn. Real Wealth Investor Academy used to be a paid investor academy. Now it's free. We've moved everything to realwealthnetwork.com. So you're probably aware of that. Um, our site is loaded with free videos, uh, dozens of, of video modules and downloads and blog articles and everything so you can really get a lot of uh a lot of research and learning there and then of course kathy's book uh, retire rich with rentals is the best of the best in her knowledge and what has helped so many people uh, create real wealth and get out of the rat race so they don't have to work forever so that's like 20 bucks or something on amazon and it's just packed full with a lot of good stuff so just wanted to make sure that everyone's aware of those resources and then these are some of the tools and apps I mentioned earlier for focused investors. You know, Kathy and I've met a lot of you members, uh, the, the 46,000 members now we, at our events who've been there coming for years and years and the newer people. And it's really interesting to talk to the ones who really succeed and seem to do well are the ones who seem to have the best focus. And they focus, they use the tools, they learn, they grow. And so that's why we came up with this program so many years ago, the focused investor and why we do this mid-year check-in. So Basecamp is what we use, Kathy and I use personally to not only run the business, Real Wealth Network, but we also keep all of our investment properties in Basecamp. Each one has a separate project is the way they call it. And you can have separate folders and files. You can upload videos. You can upload photos. You can create to-dos with reminders that pop up. You can send emails to and from Basecamp easily. What it does is it gets all your stuff out of your email and moves it into a very uh, dialed in and organized holding system where you can access anything at any time. So someone asks you a question about your property or then you need a HUD or you're going to refinance or anything like that or you want to pull up the appraisal. You go into Basecamp, you search for it, and boom, it pops right up, and everything's right there. 
So that's Basecamp. I think it's 99 bucks a month and work, worth every penny. We've been using that for years, and that's what we use personally. Uh, Lynda.com, as you might be aware of, is a great resource for online learning. Uh, everything from QuickBooks to um, Microsoft Excel to numbers for Mac, uh, even real estate investing things in there from Lynda.com. So a lot of video resources similar to Real Wealth Network. Uh, main site in the Real Wealth Investor Academy for real estate investing. Linda has it on just about everything you can think of. Um, the Pomodoro mentioned earlier that keeping ourselves disciplined on that to-do pile and what we focus on and what we do, um, the Pomodoro works really well for that. It's like a timer that counts down and at the end of 25 minutes, a little alarm goes off. So it's just a thing to keep you focused. Uh, Kathy and I use QuickBooks online for our real estate investing uh, management of the books. So our virtual bookkeeper can uh, get that dialed in and reconciled and we can see it anytime, anywhere. And then the whole life challenge is um, basically a, a great program for getting on track with your health and fitness. So you might wanna check out whole life challenge. So we've gone through the whole process here. We're gonna wrap this up, gone through envisioning, strategizing, implementing and observing. So congratulations for you on doing that as a mid-year check-in. Uh, moving ahead, just hope that you stay aware of your theme for the year. Continue to develop your key personal quality. Uh, remove, your, uh, I mean, review your big three goals consistently. Stay disciplined and follow through on your rituals. And do today what your future self will thank you for. Do today what will feel good tomorrow. So in conclusion, I just want to wrap up by, uh, I want you to picture your life like 10 to 15 years in the future. And I want you to imagine that you continue to become the best version of yourself. Imagine that you're happy, you're healthy, you have amazing relationships, and you're truly a focused investor. Imagine that you continue to build an investment portfolio of cash flowing real estate, that you, lever you leverage your money wisely, you leverage your time wisely, you have this great portfolio of properties that creates passive income. It may have taken some time, but you stuck to it. Imagine that. You had the discipline to focus on what matters most, and you were eventually able to replace the income you received from working a traditional job. And then imagine that you went on beyond that and you surpassed your previous income, your current income, you surpassed it. So now you have the money and the freedom to do anything you want, to live life on your own terms. You're able to wake up every day, wake up every day in complete and total command of your life and your time. You can live where you want, you can travel where you want, you can learn a new skill, you can give back to those in need. Imagine that simply by applying what we discussed today and having some faith in yourself, you have become your future self. You're living what you dreamed about and it's only the beginning. So this is exactly what I want for you. It's exactly what Kathy and I have experienced in our own lives, and it really comes down to one thing, and it's focus. So I hope what I've shared to you today in, in today's webinar help, really helps you be a more focused investor, continue to be a more focused investor, focused on getting even better, focused on doing what matters most, and focused on creating a future of real wealth. So stoked that you're here. Thanks for attending, and here's to finishing 2019 with clarity, fun, and focus. Good luck, everyone.